Welcome to the Legendary Upside podcast. My name is Pat Corain. Today I'm joined by Davis Maddock and Sam Sherman. And we're doing ADP chasing. That's what that's what we're doing here. So Sam, take it away, please. <laughs> yeah, excited to be back. Um, this is the first of, I think, what's going to be many ADP chasings this offseason. Uh, still hammering out our exact schedule of, of how we're going to be doing this, but uh, we had to do a check-in. It's been, what, nine? No, yeah, six, eight, nine months. I don't know. It's been a while since we've talked, guys. So, um, yeah, maybe we just start with... Um, I'll say I'll just jump in and say d- details on uh, what we're doing, you know, uh, TBD, but we did need a check-in. The check-in was necessary. Sam got overdue. together for us. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be diving into the ADP of uh, the big board. And talking about some of our favorite spots and you know, probably getting some arguments. Yeah, it's been it's been more months since we've talked than JSN fantasy points per game on <laughs> half point PPR site. <laughs> so I guess I guess there that we was go. sort of like the good delineation. You know, once once That's we right. get past seven point three months, it was time for us to come back and uh, see how high Karain has Adam Thielen ranked on on the dog app site. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was shocked by your Thielen ranking, but um, yeah, we'll I appreciate that it. you've come around. Um, yeah, anyways, I I can't actually crane. I can't actually um, add these charts. Oh right, um, yeah. I think you might have to do that, but yeah. Why don't we just uh, dive right in? So these are the largest risers of the past month, and. I think what's important to know literally here is, exactly who you'd think. It's so yeah. funny. Like it's like I could have I could have done this list maybe outside of Tank Dell with my eyes closed, just knowing like who is drafting right now on February twenty right. seventh. Exactly. What are they gonna yeah. be into? Like it's it's so goddamn funny that it's exactly who you would think it is. It's all rookies. Uh all rookies are second year players, basically. The only one that kind of surprised me is is Drake London, and maybe we can talk through that. Besides that. Yeah, you're right, Davis. It's just, you know, people went to NFL mock draft database.com. They looked for the top five skilled players on there and they just bumped their ADPs up as high as possible. So, um, yeah. And also, I was going to note the original ADP from January 29th, that's just uh, Hayden Wink's default rankings, I think, that were in there. Okay. Or, Not or, a McBride right? fan, Hayden Wink's. Yeah. So, we this is a chance <laughs> to shame him for some, <laughs> some, <laughs> some initial rankings. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell with... you what, yeah. let's just start here. This tank Dell tank Dell at 28. Look, I love a short King and I, I'm still trying to decide if it's short King summer or not. Tank Dell. T- I think tank Dell and Rashi rice in the big board have the two worst ADPs. They have, they have almost no way to pay off where they're being drafted and are like almost stone locks to have increased competition I, I... after the NFL draft. Yeah, that's fair, especially on Rice. But there's also, you know, he's he was pretty efficient with Patrick Mahomes as a rookie wide receiver. So I think he has a path to paying off a, a late second round ADP. Okay, so let's just let's they're going to draft one guy, right? So top top add add some top 100 pick wide receiver to the Chiefs roster, right? Haven't we been adding that pick like every year though? Like you know, and they I've, have been doing it. They have been. Yes, right? that's true. They have been, but not usually in Hard, the first Hardman round. Sky it, Rice, yeah. It could be less. It could be less uh, threatening than it feels like it might be. But then they're also going to replace Sky Moore, Kadarius Tony, Justin Watson. Right. McCall right. Hardman, uh, Richie James, with with theoretically someone who might actually be able to play wide receiver at at an NFL level, and that is going to be a huge. I mean, it's going to be a huge target drain on Kelsey, and it's going to be. I I think Rice could see there are paths to him seeing like a smaller target share in 2024 than he did like the back half of the 2023 season where they just really had to lean sure. on him. Yeah, yeah. no, and I, it's tough because Rice. I don't think Rice is like that good. But like second round pick put up 2.21 yards per route run with Patrick Mahomes as a rookie. I get it. You know, the market is, sure. is like, and I think I'm, I'm basically at ADP, maybe even a little head. Cause it's like, it's, I, I do agree that like, that's, it's, it's one I'm struggling with because I do think the, um, the competition materializes. I think they bring someone in, they probably sign some free agents, but like, I mean, honestly, like we could be talking about like Roman Wilson and Darnell Mooney. 
Oh. Yeah. No, come on. I'm serious. Maybe. I mean, it's maybe, possible. maybe, honestly, maybe. Sure. Yeah. So then I'm it's also- like, I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it if that's what happens. Don't we also just want like because I, I had this the same initial thought, Davis, but then on the other end, like, don't we just want this Chiefs offense to be better? I mean, in, in their prime, you know, Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill coexisted on this offense, and we're both the number one overall player at their position in fantasy, right? So yeah, but I think there's Rashi Rice is not that good. No, I yeah, and I'm not I'm not saying he's that good, but I think that you know just, just the Chiefs like going back to attempting more pass attempts and scoring more touchdowns to get back to their you know average of the past couple of years versus where they're at in 2023. Like I guess my point is Rashi Rice could have the same target share or even have a lesser target share, but in a just better, higher scoring offense he could end up paying off that price. Like we just need this offense to be better, which is weird to say about the Kansas City I, I don't Chiefs. know. If, I don't even know if they want to, does that, does that feel weird to say? Like, does it like, I, I mean, obviously I think Pat would like to win some individual awards again. I think he'd like to win the MVP and stuff again, but right now the D they're set up to be a good defensive team again next year without really doing much other than paying the guys that they already have on the roster the offensive line is like mostly fine. In fact, they were missing their second best offensive lineman in the Super Bowl that they won. That not a huge need to spend money there. Like it, right? It might. Re- I mean, maybe maybe the Roman Wilson, uh, Roman Wilson and and Darnell Mooney route is the way to go. You just kind of get some competent guys who can keep the chains moving. You don't pay Mike Evans whatever his his asking price would be. I, I, think, I think what I they think that's do, what they end up. Maybe it's Marquise yeah. Brown or someone's willing to take a discount. Um, and Noah they Brown. can bring in no, yeah, I mean, no, Noah Brown, <laughs> Noah, Noah, Brown, Brown. Noah Brown would be like the wide receiver 37 in fantasy on the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's it's so one thing I think that's interesting with Rice is that heading into the playoffs, he seemed to be what didn't he flip Travis Kelsey in the playoff ADP at the yes. very end? I think yes. at the and, very end, yeah, yeah, and so and then. Kelsey goes off in the playoffs, which you know I think is a well, Rice indication. got Rice got hurt. So Rice got hurt in the Dolphins game, and he only played sixty four percent of the snaps against the Bills, and his targets were way lower in both the, the Ravens game and the 49ers game because he like he he got his ankle got rolled up on. He didn't miss any time, uh, but in that Dolphins game, and they leaned on Kelsey a lot more than they did in the regular season, and you you're seeing that drafters are worried that that will continue. Uh, I think Kelsey's a pretty big value right now because I'm not right. as worried as the yeah. market. But you know, so maybe that's where they're getting it wrong. Maybe maybe Kelsey's the way to play it. And I certainly, if you've made me pick one, I pick Kelsey. But I don't know. I think there's some there's kind of an interesting thing where we were seeing the momentum and the enthusiasm for Rice. Is at the at the ankle note's a really good one, and then Kelsey comes on. But like, I don't know, and like. Week 14 of next year, are they going to be leaning on Kelsey or are they going to, you know, be leaning on their wide receivers and saving Kelsey for the playoffs again? I don't know if they, I don't know if they so much save Kelsey for the playoffs. Like he, so he said on his show is like at the end of the season, like, dude, he was in like a bad way. Cause remember he was, he was like 16 yards away from having eight straight a thousand yard seasons. And basically he said, he was like, it just wasn't even worth it. Like the, the amount that it takes to get, his body ready to go for a game. He, he just couldn't even do it. Like he needed that week, which as a 31 year old man, myself, um, I can tell you every year uh, I just got back from a skiing trip. I've been, I've been back for uh, 48 hours, still not a hundred percent as, as a 31 year old. So I can't really imagine what it's like to be a 30. Well, Hey, old. listen, it gets worse. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. Yeah. I, I think on, on the Kelsey point though, we have both, McBride and Laporta on this list and to change the subject a bit to the tight ends here I really don't understand the gap between Laporta to McBride and Kelsey I I guess it it depends it it depends right like on how you look at Kelsey's season like was he truly saved for the playoffs or was there just like randomness there and that's when he had all of his big high fantasy point scoring weeks but Kelsey's like season-long stats once you factor in the playoffs weren't actually that big of a drop-off from what he's been doing. They were a drop-off from last year, but not from like 
2021, I guess. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like McBride, Laporta, Kelsey, um, those top three tight ends, do you agree on that you, ordering? I just don't think you can justify Laporta's ADP, really. Like, it I, seems I don't crazy. Either. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't, I, don't I really don't get it. Like, he's not the number one on his own team. This is, this gotta, is like, you have to take him ahead of Debo Samuel if you want him. Yeah. When a tight, I mean, I get it. He's a second year tight end. He just had this incredible rookie season. He's really good. He's got a quarterback who's, who's going to be looking to him a lot. But like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I had Laporta, the team that, that I, I made the best ball main finals with had Laporta and it was like, a sweat to get his score to even count, <laughs> you know, like there's, it's, it's interesting that it feels like things have really, I don't know if it's, you know, maybe just the time of year or just kind of looking in, you know, looking at an amazing rookie going into year two and we're projecting it a, another leap forward, which I get, but he's not the number one on his team. And when a tight end is being drafted like this, like, that box should be checked. This is an expensive price to pay for a tight end. I'm usually pretty on board with elite tight end, but the Porta going here, and then you have Kelsey, you have what's, Andrews. What's the profit they, potential of Laporta? I, I guess the profit potential is McBride doesn't truly break out, and that Marvin Harrison Jr. actually does come in and, and immediately suckers away a ton of his target share. Or neighbors. Kelsey, I, I think McBride's not the number one next year. Sure. So it's a similar situation. Um, or, or that, uh, and then, and then, you know, Isaiah likely splitting more time with Mark Andrews. Uh, Kelsey is actually 34 years old or whatever. Um, Brock Bowers. We, I guess we should talk about Brock Bowers. I mean, I, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. I don't know if you guys saw these things. Um, I forget which one, which guy was tweeting this about the history, the history of six, one tight ends. And then there's been the report that Bowers is going to come in like way smaller than, He's supposed to. I, I don't yeah. know if that stuff really matters. Care. Yeah, I, I care a little bit. I definitely care a he's little bit. He's a good bit. run blocker. And I, I think that's the big thing to keep in mind with Bowers. It's like he's not he's a little undersized, but he was a pretty damn good run blocker. And he's viewed as like a traditional tight end. Maybe he's used more like a you know move tight end or a, a big wide receiver um than we would think just because of the size. But he's this is not a Kyle Pitt situation. He can actually play tight end. Kyle Pitts yeah. situation. Can't hear that. I'm already I'm already seeing Kyle Pitts hype uh on Twitter after Johnny Smith got released today. So yeah, it's, I guess it's, we're it's gonna have to Pritz is well yeah. hyped. <laughs> since I did it. <laughs> I, I'm logging in. I'm logging in to do the big board, and I take Brees Hall in the first round, like every time. Uh then I take Devontae Adams or Debo Samuel. Then I wait and I take Trey McBride. Uh then I take uh, on the eight nine turn, I take Kyle Pitts and Chase Brown just every time, and I just so I just build every team basically the same way. I think Pitts is perfectly fine now. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. there's plenty of room for for him to pay off this ADP. Yeah, that so that gets into the Falcons thing here, and, and sorry, we're just kind of jumping around, but Drake London, he's up to pick thirty nine overall, which I guess is pretty similar to where he was going last year. I for me, the big question with both London and Pitts. I guess for, for any Falcons players, but particularly the pass catchers is what is their solution going to be at quarterback? Because I think the upside of London at pick 39 overall, you, you have to tell yourself some kind of story that they're going to at least have league average quarterback play. And you're that, praying for Kirk cousins. You're praying yeah. for Kirk cousins. Well, but if you it's, get, it's but if you get Kirk happening. cousins, you might have the wide receiver four in fantasy football, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like the ceiling, London's the ceiling good for that offense. Yeah. London's the ceiling awesome. for that offense is so high. And this guy they hired to be the offensive coordinator. I mean, no one's got like a bad thing to say about him. He, he seems like, seems like, you know, a, a McBay, uh, Shanahan S style, like super boost to your passing game, basically. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I think Cousins is plausible. Like he's a free agent, you know. <laughs> so there's one way yeah. that could happen, you know. Um, he is coming off an Achilles tear, which is not ideal, but I don't know. I think it's it's plausible. And then the other thing that's interesting about the Falcons now is that I do think they want a pocket passer. Like they want someone who can operate the the Shanahan McVay offense, and so they're less likely to get fields. I think. Which is which is good 
if we are invested in pits in London because because we want passing attempts and you know Fields is going to be running I think a pretty low volume passing offense. What if, what if they just pick JJ McCarthy at eight? Good, I'm in. I don't. I, I have I have my questions about McCarthy, but like, I mean, what what I guess what I would say is like. It's probably now more like London or Pitts because you got a rookie quarterback who's going to have managed attempts. But I think I think London can get there, or I think Pitts can get there. So I would I would probably be a little bit more nervous about taking them together, but I probably still would. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, yeah. If the alternative is you know going back to Desmond Ritter or I mean that that's a thing, right? Is like. I, I'm going to go ahead and say after the Raheem Morris press conference today that there's a 0% chance that Taylor Heineke, Marcus Mariota, or Desmond Ritter quarterbacks the Atlanta Falcons. Mariota in Philly? I, I, <laughs> yeah, but I'm just going to say, I'm I just agree say that. Any, any quarterback who has been involved to any degree. I mean, Raheem Morris basically just like said, these dudes are, are cheap. Yeah. He said if yeah. we had it. I believe the exact court words were, if we had a different quarterback, I probably wouldn't even be here today, which is <laughs> that is a wild quote. He said, buddy, it's, this is likely Matt Ryan plays in these games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We, we actually should talk about J.J. McCarthy a little bit. It's, I guess he's not necessarily a riser, but if you compare him in ADP to the other rookie quarterbacks, he, he doesn't even get drafted 100% of the time in 20 rounds. I think that's drafts right, though. On on underdog there's no possible way it can be right if the rumors are now that he might go ahead of drake may there there is no way that can be right that is wrong well sure i guess if he goes again ahead of drake may but like this dude is skinny he didn't like throw the ball in college and i i think the thing about the thing about it is he could sit he could sit for like a whole year and i wouldn't be surprised what, what team would take him that he would sit the vikings think? The, the vikings bring back kirk and they draft McCarthy. Kirk on a one year franchise tag. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I could see it. Um, I mean, he does run a little bit. He he did have eight rushing touchdowns on 161 quote unquote rushes. He does he does run a little bit, yeah. Yeah. He's pretty mobile. Here's, here, here's the thing. I just am laying down a marker right now that is obviously gonna get thrown back in my face or has the, the immense potential to. I'm just not really buying it. Like this idea that people are throwing out there, like he is crane. What's like a good comp for this? Where like the 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 advanced numbers for him actually lie because he was asked to do so little. Like basically any sort Brock of Brock Purdy in the NFL. <laughs> he dude, actually, yeah, he de he dead ass is just college Brock Purdy. Yeah, he's, he's college really Purdy. Yeah, that. he's college Purdy. Yeah, that is a, yeah. that is a really good comp. I mean, this dude but I mean, I think you're up. hoping he's NFL Purdy. Like that's what that's what the NFL teams are hoping too. Like, and I think it's possible he is. That he's he's literally like 200 pounds. That we just did this with Bryce Young, and it turns out I think correctly that we're like, huh, it's not great if like we're kind of hoping he'll be mobile and he's 200 he's, he's, pounds. He's tall though, so he could yeah, just, yeah he's eat. tall. He could eat. You know how how quickly what's his appetite like? Because I think he needs to put that <laughs> weight on. ASAP. I mean, here's the thing, Bryce. There was not enough that Bryce could eat. You know, like it just wasn't going to happen for him. Sure, McCarthy. He could. I mean, he's he's 21 years old. Like he could he could get yeah there. he could get no, there. I, I'm talking about best ball. So from a dynasty perspective, I think he's he's pretty interesting. He's going to have draft capital. He's mobile. He's got a big arm. Like I like I like the way he looks. Like he, I think he's pretty interesting from a long term perspective. But as a best ball pick, like how many games am I getting from this guy? And then if he actually plays, I compared him. I was writing him up um, and I'm like, what's the difference between this guy and Derek Carr this year? And Derek Carr's pretty close to free. And I know he's going like, to play all the games. Derek Carr is going to get a concussion and a torn labrum <laughs> and like, a, you know, like <laughs> it's just sort of like I feel like Derek Carr by the end of every game for the Saints last year, like Derek Carr was just hanging on by a thread. Like it just like okay, <laughs> it was so. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree, but <laughs> I think yeah. the the better the better comp would be what did a rookie? What did you win if you took rookie year Mac Jones? And the answer was he was like fine, you know. He he was like he was like pretty fine, but obviously probably would have been yeah, small yeah. win in best ball. But yeah, yeah, it just seems like I don't know. I guess maybe you're right, Crane. In that like, if you want to draft him, just wait till after the draft. I don't think JJ McCarthy yeah, is gonna 
he's not going to see some huge uptick in ADP post draft. He'll go yeah. like if he gets drafted into a decent situation where he's probably going to start, say the Falcons, he'll go in what the one. Well, what if he's 60s, the second pick 150s. to the commies? Even then, though, is he going to be, yeah, so be what? One thirties, one forties. Cliff like, Kingsbury's quarterback is going to go in the tenth round. Like, no, he's going to he's going to go in the fourteenth round. Do you guys read the Cliff notes today? There's a lot. Of, there's Korean. There's a lot of good press conference stuff today. Cliff, no, Cliff basically, didn't. Cliff basically found himself and said he's like dedicated to running the ball now. <laughs> I honestly hope Drake May falls. Drake May is such a good prospect. I want him have nothing to do with Cliff. You want him to fall to the love. Patriots? I, I don't obviously want him to fall to the no, Patriots. No, I, I would rather point... I would rather Cliff than anything that's going on with the Patriots right now. The Patriots, yeah, we man. thought the Patriots were a fantasy wasteland the last two years. It's like somehow gonna get worse. It, it, like, it's... Alex Van Pelt, baby, <laughs> he resurrected to a black. The Patriots roster, it's like hard on. <laughs> like you search the Patriots on the underdog ADP and the top Mario skill Douglas. position player besides Ramondre is Demario Douglas. That's right. And it's like. And well, people I'm kind, are arguing I'm that, kind like, of interested in. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no I'm, I'm all in on him. I, but... I was too, and then I realized Kendrick Bourne's going to come back, and Demario he's torn Kendrick... ACL. No, but Kendrick Bourne is just like the final evolution. Like he's like the last Pokemon evolution of Demario Douglas. No, I think I, I think he's also a free agent. He, he is a free agent and coming off a torn oh. ACL. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about that. But yeah, it's. I mean, the Patriots. I mean, you are here. right, but I thought Bourne Bourne was like. Kind of breaking out last year. It he really was. Stuck for him. Yeah. He's legit breaking out. Yeah. Yeah. So if tomorrow Douglas turns out to be Kendrick Bourne, I'm psyched. It's uh it's pretty nice at that ADP. Yeah. Yeah. Uh well, I mean, should talk I, about, let's, talk, um, let's talk May real quick because this is a dude I am hammering. Yeah. And I and... don't I truly do not care that if he slides in the draft. In fact, give me all the slide. I don't want like a little half tepid slide. I want a full blown slide to 10 right or slide to slide to the falcons slide to the vikings like oh baby like oh, I, the, I mean, the, if, he, if he ends up being if he ends up being a viking and they don't re-sign cousins we could see we could see some trey lance uh level steam yeah on drake may we could see him being the quarterback eight so it, i think if you're drafting like not putting like I don't know it's weird like this just putting it in perspective of like this draft steam this there's no chance this guy falls like outside the first round right he's not getting past the Raiders okay he's not getting past the Broncos like this dude will will be drafted with a franchise quarterback level of investment and in some ways the further he falls the better you know with that general uh you know framework you know what i mean so the the worst case scenario is he goes to the patriots and then i think you're like <laughs> yeah i don't love the fact that i reached for him a bunch in the big board because now he's on the patriots but even then i don't know i, I have enough confidence in his skill set where like i don't think it's a i, I don't, I don't even care player. honestly if he's a patriot um like it's not good i would say that's of the people, not of the teams picking in the top 15 that's like the worst spot for him to yeah. go but I just I don't know like I, like I, I I watched him a bunch yesterday just to kind of get a feel. I was like this dude is just like Justin Herbert, but I don't hate him yet. Now yeah. like three three years from now I'm probably gonna hate him after he loses a bunch of big games and I'm like laughing at him. But right now he's just like super fun. I think he's gonna lose those games in a more fun way though. Like he's gonna he's gonna lose them in more Josh Allen ways. You know he's gonna take chance. He's gonna he, throw that deep ball. There, well, there's a great play that he makes where he's getting sacked and he throws the ball with his left hand. He throws yeah. a touchdown pass with his left mm. hand. I, I'm into that. The NFL needs way more of that and way less whatever J.J. McCarthy is, in my opinion. I mean, like, apparently his footwork isn't perfect and, like, he misses throws sometimes and, like, okay, like, yeah, sure. But he's a three-year guy. He's he's a young quarterback. He's got a pretty big arm. His big-time deep throws – uh, were awesome. Like this dude had a really strong big time throw rate on twenty plus yard throws. He's two hundred and thirty pounds. He's yeah. a willing scrambler. He's mobile. He rushed for a bunch of touchdowns. He rushed for like almost twice as many touchdowns per game as Herbert. Like this dude is going to score fantasy points at like I think a very high rate. I, as as fantasy players here, we should not be concerned with any of these NFL red flags because. Some of the red flags are about how he takes chances. <laughs> like, fuck yeah. yeah, dude. Like, 
yeah. we Justin Fields has has red flags as a re, like all of Justin Fields NFL red flags I think came to pass. You know the reason the NFL was worried about him they they were right. Like he had some real flaws as a passer and it's affected his career. But he's still crushed as a fantasy quarterback. I think this is a somewhat similar situation where like May's going to be out there starting. Maybe he like makes too many mistakes. Maybe he's too erratic. But like, you know, Blake Bortles put together a pretty good fantasy season in his second year. I, I think yeah. I think we want big guys who run around and make plays. And I think May's a lot better than Bortles. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. the rushing rushing point is a good one, which makes me feel better about some of these bad landing spots. If he goes to a team like the Patriots, that's likely to force his rush attempts and scrambles to go up just based on the fact that his top weapon is going to be <laughs> Demario Douglas or Devontae Parker, right? So a guy who has some rushing juice is a bit insulated from the the downside well, landing spot risks as well. Well, we should, we should definitely talk about Jane Daniels then because mm -hmm. I'm concerned about him, not really for fantasy, but I'm concerned. Uh, it's a little Will Levisy to me, just a just a smidge Will Levisy. Where my perception of this guy for the entirety of knowing who Jaden Daniels was after he turned 18 was this is like a pretty disappointing, like kind of Spencer Rattler. Really, not much of a difference between Spencer Rattler a year ago and Jaden Daniels a year ago. It's just that Jaden Daniels. I mean, had this truly like you sh you should from a Bayesian perspective, change your perception right. of him after this, this season at LSU. But I don't know if it changed enough for me to say this guy should be the third pick in the NFL draft and a team should leverage their franchise around him. Um, I don't know where you guys are at there. I mean, he would scare the shit out of me if I was a general manager. Like I, yeah. I would take May, no question, but no question. The, you know, he like he should be ready. You know, he's a fifth year senior. He needs to have this long career. Um, he should be ready. He's a little skinny and he takes big hits. The Johnny Knoxville, Danny Kelly tweet like really lives rent free. Like I, I can't yes. stop thinking about those hits. And it's a little, you know, it's a little concerning given that he is going to make, you know, his, his fantasy path is as a rusher. And He's not like the super elusive Lamar Jackson, but he's built like Jackson. So you're like, uh. but at the same time, this is a weekly game and he should be able to really put up some spike weeks. So I've struggled with him. I want to be more excited than I am. Um, we're how, ahead how of ADP of though in the rankings and think, I think we'll stay that way. How much are you of the not being excited or because you think he's going to be a Patriot? That's part of it. That that's definitely part of it because like he's someone where it's like, man, that's such a bad situation. And I really want to believe in the talent in a way where like he pops pops in my stuff, obviously, because of all the rushing, but I'm like a little bit nervous about him succeeding in a really bad situation. So I would I would actually be from a fantasy perspective, it would be awesome if he did go number two. Because that just gives us a really nice like I feel great. Like I would like more good players to draft, and I think him him as a commander is actually pretty pretty damn fun. And he does like currently go in a range. He still goes after these guys, but pretty close to Jared Goff, Trevor Lawrence, to uh, Brock Purdy. These are guys that I get it. Like if if Jaden Daniels hits, he certainly has like top five QB upside in fantasy in a way that these guys might struggle to. But those guys also have just proven to be very solid, reliable fantasy assets. And like, I do think there is some opportunity cost if you're taking Daniels over Goff and Lawrence that th that could end up being like a pretty big, I, I guess I'm just wondering, like, is that a risk worth taking? Like, or do you just take the old reliable veterans? I think at quarterback, the calculus is a little bit different than other positions where I may be like a little bit less chasing the ultimate upside at quarterback and in, in best ball. Um, I, I don't know if that resonates. I get, I, I get that. Yeah. Because quarterback yeah. like doesn't matter in so many of the best ball permutations where it's like a bunch of the quarterbacks kind of scored the same in week 15, 16, 17. Obviously I think the, the biggest thing they can do for you is just not get hurt. Right. Yeah. Uh, or, or, yeah. 
or if you take a quarterback early and they bust, you know, th- those are kind of the two scenarios where they actually really impact your results. And neither of those are that positive. Yeah. The downside of quarterback matters because you're only going to be taking two to three of them. And so if a dude's just not putting up points, it's a major problem. I, I agree. I mean, I think he has risk of, I mean, that's why I'm like kind of talking about his build and his, you know, him taking hits. It's like, if he were to miss a, five, six games, that really hurts you in best ball. Really, you might only have like literally one other quarterback, you know? So, but of course, he could also stay healthy and absolutely torch because he he runs the ball, you know, so effectively, Mm -hmm. um, especially between the 20s. I will say, I think if you want him, this is probably as cheap as he gets. Right, he's he's gonna move up as the draft well, position he gets a little. Fun. Does go to the Patriots? Well, true. He yeah, if he goes, <laughs> he goes to the Patriots, then maybe not. But if there's any Which is, truth to this what, number two stuff, like he he will move up in price, maybe a lot. So, what insiders are saying right now, as of Monday and Tuesday, February twenty sixth, twenty seventh, all the all the people who say they know, I'm disregarding anyone who's putting McCarthy ahead of May because I think that is total bullshit. Most everyone is saying. No one really wants to trade up that bad other than for McCarthy, but that would maybe be trading up to like seven or something like that. They're saying it's Williams, May, uh, Daniels, you know, and, and uh, we, we did, we got a crack rock bomb, right? He said Williams is for sure going one and May right. is for sure going to the commies. Yeah. Crack rocks. So having a little bit, he's, he's, I think still pretty good on the Trump news stuff, but he, when he's uh, on a cold <laughs> the streak with the NFL, <laughs> yeah. He did call Belichick to the Falcons, but you know, yeah, he's he's a little, a little bit of a slump. <laughs> I think but, I think that one's pretty well explainable, though, which is that I believe him and that Belichick wanted to do it and the Falcons ownership wanted to do it, but he but Bill also said absolutely, but I just get to hire all my guys. You know, I'm bringing yeah. my my dumb kid. I'm bringing um, McDaniel. I'm bringing Joe Judge, and they were like, no. Like you can come coach, but not, you're not, we're not re, we're not just making this Patriot South. And he was like, well, then I don't want to do it. Yeah. That, that makes sense to me and how that went down. Um, Crane, curious for you. Cause you, you said you've been hammering may yeah. like, what's your strategy? Cause I'm like, so focused on stacking quarterbacks in best ball. Like I, I almost have like less player takes at quarterback. Cause I'm more just seeing like, Oh, what wide receiver did I draft? Oh, I want to pair him with my quarterback. Right. So how are you approaching like stacking with May? Are you just taking guys that are likely to be on his team or or what are your thoughts on that? I was taking, cause I'm taking a decent amount of McLaurin cause he's going to get a quarterback upgrade. Um, and I think he's decently priced and like, you kind of need a wide receiver there. So I, I have McLaurin a fair amount anyway. And so that's one way I'll, I'll, I'll have him uh, and then get May. Uh, Brian Robinson's also decently priced, so you can kind of do that. Sometimes I'll also take, well, at this point, this is just silly, but you could take like Khalil Herbert, but he's not going to the Bears. Um, I'm not taking Demario Douglas really with him, but I guess you could. So yeah. that's kind of how I'm doing it. Mostly I'm just taking the commanders uh, guys and, and trying to stack that, that way. But I, I also do think like you, there's going to be, first of all, I think there's some inefficiencies in the market. And I think we can kind of beat the market probably a little bit better now than we can in the late summer. A better time to play or take draft now than in June. Exactly. And also, a bunch of guys are going to get hurt. And a lot of our success in this tournament will just be avoiding that randomness. So I think like the stacks are there. It's going to be important, but it's like, I'm less, I'm, I'm just focusing on it a little bit less than when we kind of have so much more information. We know where all the free agents landed. One, one thing I am doing is I'm taking a bunch of rookie wide receivers in almost every draft. And so I am hoping that some of that luck luck shines on me where, you know, I, I bank some stacks like, and I'll try to do that a little bit um, more. Like if I have uh, Josh Allen, like I'm trying to get Brian Thomas and Troy Franklin. Right. Same with Mahomes, like that. I think one of those guys in the late first. Um, I think that's a great way to go about it. I, I, re- I mean, obviously, I, I like to do stacks, but like 
I'm just one. I just like make some assumptions. So the assumption yeah. would be like Caleb's going to be a bear. Uh, May is going to be a commander. Cousins right. is going back to the Vikings. Um, I was drafting for a little while. Like McCarthy was going to be a Seahawk. So if I took Metcalf or Lockett, I would do McCarthy. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to be gone. Yeah, he'll be gone. What kind of Too kind early. of well before yeah. then? Um, yeah, but I, I think you can definitely in these early drafts. I, I would not be as hyper focused on like I gotta have like three stacks or whatever. Like I think an unstacked Troy Franklin like is probably fine. Yeah. Well, here's another thing I've done is I I've gone Bijan, London, Pitts. I, I don't know who the quarterback is, but like yeah. I, don't, I don't care. Like I, I don't have to get that part right. I've yeah, got the yeah. Falcons offense and like someone's making them good. It could be McCarthy, it could be Cousins, it could be whoever, but. Could be Drew Lock. Could be Drew. I, well, I think probably not Drew Lock, but yeah, there's like I'm betting on the offensive coordinator and someone to run the system. Um, yeah. I mean, hell, it could be Jimmy Garoppolo. Like they, this offense, if they pass enough, and they're going to be a, there's going to be a big gap from how much they did pass to how much they will pass, and there should be a pretty big gap in you know getting their good players the ball. So I, I think stacking without the quarterback right now is pretty nice. Like I I do that with the Jags. Like I'll do um I'll do Kirk and Engram, and then if I get Lawrence, I get Lawrence. But if I don't, you know, I I'll, I'll try to I'll try to uh, just get another quarterback or whatever. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so let let's move the conversation to to the rookie wide receivers here, starting with Marvin Harrison. He's going at pick 18 now up from pick 33 and, you know, Hayden's initial ranks that were in here. Um, I, I'm just, okay. So I'm curious and this, this might be a horrible take, but as someone crane who you you've done dynasty stuff forever. So you probably have a better answer than, than I do. And, and Davis, you have as well. Is Marvin Harrison like slightly inflated in dynasty just because his name is Marvin Harrison. <laughs> I don't know. Because I mean, I guess because he's Marvin Harrison and because people have known who he is since he is 18. Okay. But you have to, I think zoom out and say the entire market is like, you know, scouts are overvaluing him for that reason as well, because generally he's talked about like the, the best player in the entire draft class. Mm-hmm. You know, he's in that conversation but or think, people say, I, I think, think he's the best is, player in the entire draft class. I think that's probably true. Honestly, I do. Because I mean, like, obviously he's incredible. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not my, yeah. my, I'm not, I'm not player taking like no. Marvin Harrison. St- like I'm, you'll definitely not going to see me being one of these actually Malik neighbors is the number one wide receiver for my rankings. Like I'm not going to be going there. The dude had 54% of Ohio state's, receiving touchdowns and and 45 percent of their passing game as as a whole last season he had uh 21 percent of their passing touchdowns in only four games on 11 receptions as a as a as an 18 year old because he he got hurt like he is that good but i mean is he is he that much markedly like am i gonna say he is that much better than jamar chase was as a prospect no i think that's kind of about the same that's where I was kind of going with it. Um, I, I saw some tweet. I think it was uh, Kyle Dvorak put this out where he compared Marvin Harrison and Jamar Chase. And obviously that's a really high bar to compare someone to just because Marvin Harrison doesn't crush Jamar Chase in, in certain metrics doesn't mean he's bad. But generally the conclusion of the tweet is that Jamar Chase looked slightly better um, with his prospect numbers than Harrison did, or, or at least – it was very well, close. And it matters when you're drafting a guy 18th overall in, in best ball. Like those hairs matter probably. Yeah. And it, yeah. that's what I'm struggling. It's like, I don't like, I agree that he's this amazing prospect, but like, does he really have a better chance of being a top, you know, five wide receiver in fantasy than Brandon Ayuk potentially on a yes. new team? You know, definitely Debo's. more than Brandon okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Debo Sam. You think he has a better chance than you know Debo Samuel? It's not really the question, though. You know, like, and I think this is where we're. This is a. It's a best ball tournament, and like, okay. if if you gave us Jamar Chase, you know, again, like we should. This is probably where he should have gone. You know, we we drafted him way way too late. 
yeah. for the way these tournaments work. The question is like, how much does he hurt you in the regular season? And then who has a better chance of crushing in the playoffs? And I, I, Harrison is going to be someone I want to show up with in the playoffs. Like I feel pretty confident about that. So maybe he hurts me a little in the regular season, but I don't know that he hurts me that much compared to like Ayuk or Debo. Right. Yeah, like, I, I guess I just like, and, and maybe I'm just like stubborn on this, but I guess I just like, I'm a little bit more skeptical than I think you guys are of like our degrees of confidence in projecting these top rookie wide receivers to the NFL. And maybe I'm wrong here, but you know, there's been several occasions in the last five years where sort of the guy everyone is projecting to be the best wide receiver in the class just turns out not to be that good. We, we saw it with Traylon Burks, right? We saw it with Jackson Smith and Jigba to a lesser degree. You know, Rashad Bateman, he was obviously not wide receiver one. Those, but, yeah, those guys weren't wide receiver one. I mean, even Burks yeah. wasn't wide receiver one. But it's just like uh, the confidence that we have to say this guy is immediately like, I get, I get your point, Crane. That the the question is more like, okay, which of these guys has the best odds of being the you know highest projected player in weeks twelve through seventeen, right? Or, or something Marvin along those Harrison. Along like those Marvin lines. Harrison, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And I hadn't even really thought of it that way, but but Crane is right, which is like, would I am I going to want to take Marvin Harrison Jr. in main events when we get there, like six months from now? I pro- probably not, honestly. Like. I, I much I'd be much more into like Xavier Worthy as the wide receiver thirty four or whatever I think at, at, at that eventuality. Yeah, how important is winning your twelve team league? And then the more important it is, bump bump Harrison down your board a little bit. But I think you know one way to think about Harrison is what would you pay for Harrison, or what do you kind of anticipate? I'm having trouble phrasing, but like it's his price basically is what we would typically pay for a guy who just had a strong rookie season. Like a rookie wide receiver going into their second season after a strong year. He's going right next to Rasheed Rice, for example. Mm -hmm. I think given how strong of a prospect he is, that is rational. It's rational to basically treat this guy like he just had a strong rookie season because he's that kind of bulletproof of a prospect. And then, yeah, he's not going to produce like a second-year wide receiver in the early weeks. But I think he probably will produce like a second year wide receiver in the back half of the season. Mm-hmm. And like, I want that. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not even sure. Like, I, you know, full disclosure, I haven't drafted a ton of these and I'm, I'm not sure where I'll stand on him. But I think it's important to flesh that out, right? Because he is going as a yeah. top 12 wide receiver. And we basically never seen a rookie, even after you adjust for, you know, how uh, wide receiver heavy the markets have shifted the past few years. We've never seen a rookie wide receiver go this high, right? I mean, Chase no. is the highest I can remember. Maybe Amari like around Cooper. Five. Amari Cooper way back in the day. Even Cooper I didn't even uh, anything near this. Yeah, nothing yeah. near this. So that's the thing. I, I think... Yeah, Justin that's, Jefferson, that's... here's the thing. Justin Jefferson ruined it for everyone. It'll never... It'll mm-hmm. and, 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 and if Harrison even comes close, if Marvin Harrison goes... 990 yards, eight touchdowns, but has like a really big game in week 16 or week 17 and has like, you know, one crazy catch that people can highlight a la Odell Beckham. I mean, any wide receiver who goes in the first round forever is going to be like a top 80 pick, just like flat. Like, like that's just it. It'll never, <laughs> it'll never revert. I mean, I, there is a path to failure here. Um, that's like extremely yeah. plausible. Like the Patriots take him. The Patriots take him right, but all <laughs> it's such a plausible path. It's like the most likely path. That's it. No, he's failed. You blew it. Um, but you know, even on the Cardinals, right? He goes to the Cardinals. He could still fail there. Um, like CD Lamb had thirteen point two PPR points per game as a rookie, fourteen point six as a second year player. Like if if you're getting. I yeah, think Pete Overs that was calling him a round. fake alpha the whole time. Yeah, he right. He was a fake alpha until he wasn't. Um, Harrison is, he's going to be really good at the NFL level, but I do think with some of the prospect evaluation stuff and Amari Cooper is kind of the ultimate example of this, like you're just, it's hard for me to tell if we're just like adding new pieces of information that make us more confident that the player will succeed or if the new pieces of information are 
showing a higher and higher ceiling. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. he could just end up being like a really, really, really high confidence bet to be good. But as a rookie, you know, he's not going to be scoring a ton of points early on. And then he's maybe not quite there yet. It takes him two, three years to develop into the full alpha. Like we saw with, with CD lamb. I mean, if he's as good as CD lamb, obviously that's a win, but it might take a couple years and he just doesn't happen to score that many points in weeks 15, 16 and 17. Cause fantasy is random. I mean, like, yeah, you could be pretty unhappy with, with take it. It's just, God, I do not want to be, I know it feels really expensive. It is really expensive, but I, I don't want to fade this guy. And I, I kind I generally kind of get where the market is at. Yeah, I, I guess. So it's I think a the, hard click. It's a hard click for me to take him ahead of Debo Samuel. It's, who it's I've not hard click because he's almost never there. I get that. Yeah. Anytime I even think about him, he's gone. Yeah, I guess that's the thing true. is, yeah, like the the Patriots thing just seems like, and I tweeted about this, and people didn't like it, but it, it seems like a legitimately plausible and like really bad downside risk because we've seen this right with like we all agree that Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and Drake London are awesome players, but they've all been in such shitty situations that they're right. They, there's no way they'd be close to paying off, you know, a, a mid second round pick. And I just think with Harrison, um, like, I don't see, I guess, like, do you guys think he rises if he goes to the Cardinals? Cause I don't yeah. really think so. You think, well, so? he rises in this, I guess, I guess, well, it's hard to say because it's a new group of drafters. Yeah, that's what but I'm saying. These, like, are, but these drafters would take him higher for sure. Yeah, but in I guess like in August, okay, say he goes to the Cardinals in August, is he going higher than than pick 18? Probably not. Yeah. No. So so that's where like that seems like his best chance. I guess it doesn't matter. They're, they're different tournaments, right? So you don't have to think about it like this really. But like, I don't know. I I just feel like this ADP of 18 is not factoring in the the Patriots downside risk very appropriately but i don't know i'm, I'm definitely not gonna like fade him full yeah fade him in august if he lands in the cardinals like that would be silly but i guess i'm just a little weary now i i feel you i feel you. i mean he i do think that if we knew for a fact he would go to the cardinals he would go higher but yeah how much higher and are we baking in more of that than the patriots probably yeah so yeah i don't know maybe maybe the move is to let the market cool off a little bit. And if you can get him on the Cardinals in the summer and he's going here, yeah, like, you I'm know, thinking. you get your exposure at that point. Yeah. It's actually hard yeah, to get exposure right now. <laughs> that might be what I have to do. Yeah. I, I'm, it, I'm kind of fine being like, if Marvin Harrison is what beats me in the big board, Marvin Harrison is what beats me in the big board. You know, I, I will, I will tip my hat. Uh, I, I kind of learned my lesson with JSN last year where I, I find I found the price I did not. pretty unpalatable <laughs> the entire way, but I capitulated because I didn't want to show up in the end without him, you know, cause I kind of thought he, you know, and obviously there are different levels of prospects, but you know, yeah, that's like, okay. and that, yeah, there are different levels of prospects and like that's the position I found myself in with JSN last year. And, and maybe, like you could say I was wrong about this. It's not, not just, JSN failed. That doesn't mean I was right to fade him. I understand that, but um, my thought was <laughs> his pr his price didn't reflect how good of a prospect he was, plus the situation he was in. And so I was willing. Like it, it's one of those things where I think sometimes like people feel like I gotta chase the best prospect up the board no matter what because I want exposure to this year's best prospect. And like it's okay to recognize that their odds of hitting might not be reflected in their price and fade them. I don't know if that, that makes sense, but yeah, uh, I mean, we can get into JSN. It's, you know, at some point, but like the, the thing which I, I feel like JSN was a good pick to be honest last year. Like he, he failed and he still was, you know, generating some production in the, in the fantasy playoffs. And it's like, cause they're going to, yeah, God, like five i think i literally got four or five teams through the semis because of the jsn touchdown you oh know? oh oh yeah i remember i do remember that touchdown yeah, yeah, yeah. that one touchdown i mean it was <laughs> it, it, you know it's like but that's the thing about these rookies like when they fail they still tend to produce in the final weeks because teams are giving them run and 
and seeing the failure play out and it's gut wrenching for them, but it can be still helpful for us. Um, I don't get JSN's ADP now because I think, you know, that dynamic isn't in place, uh, you know, in his second year. Like if, if he's not good, he, his playing time will actually fade probably. Um, but the thing is like, yeah, he, he failed. Sometimes we're going to be wrong. We're going to, we're going to get a bunch of things wrong, but like, I love when my failures still get me into the, into the final or into the semis or whatever, because, because they're out there playing like, that's great. What if he was good? You know? Yeah. I guess I don't, I don't disagree with that logic for rookies. I just feel like it applies more to guys going later. Like, Nobody was no wide receiver who was drafted around JSN had like playing time risk in like the fifth round. It's not like if you drafted Mike Evans or Chris Godwin, there was some risk they're like not going to be on the field. So I guess that's where I kind of get lost in your argument is I I get it if you're saying it was a you know, it's optimal to draft Michael Wilson over Devontae Parker because one of the guys is more likely to be playing at the end of the year. That makes more sense. That's a better example. You know, that's a more, that's one I feel more strongly about because there were wins available in JSN's range, but you know, I'm better than taking Alexander Madison. You know, there's, there were some real landmines there and JSN as like, if you're taking the, you know, high pedigree rookie wide receiver, it can definitely go bad, but I feel like even when it goes bad, you're still in better shape than you know some of the. I other mean, J- let's just be range. real. JSN got bailed out by Quentin Johnson putting together the most John Baldwin, AJ Jenkins ass rookie <laughs> season in in a decade, right? Yeah, if, if Quentin that's, Johnson, that's true. If Quentin yeah. Johnson had been the 54th overall pick and just like didn't play, we would have been like, "Holy shit, this dude." Harrison insane. would be like in the third round. Yeah, 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 but Quentin, Quentin Johnson, Quentin Johnson just just absolutely bailed Jason out by like being so bad. Even a casual football viewer would be like, "Does that guy even know what sport he's playing?" I mean, he's, <laughs> <laughs> like God, right now, Quentin so Johnson bad. is the wide receiver sixty four. That is like a a, a positional ADP discount of like twenty spots compared to what Sky Moore was going last year, where Sky Moore basically had as bad of a rookie season as QJ did didn't score a touchdown until the Super Bowl and yeah, was going as like the wide receiver 48. Like so the market will forgive a lot from a first round wide receiver. And they're just like, nah, this dude cannot play. It's because Quinn Johnson had, had no alibis. Like uh, Sky None. Moore had, he had like the route participation alibi. Right. Quinn Johnson, it was like, he's running they 90% tried. of the routes and Alex Erickson's out. Alex Erickson. Him. And yeah. it's like, Darius Davis, <sighs> more touchdowns, uh, I it, believe than than Quinn Johnston. Yeah, that's that's bad. Um, anyways, let's let's get to fallers here. I just thought this was interesting because as predictable as the risers were, the fallers were kind of equally predictable here. It's a lot I mean, yeah, it's of it's running all backs. running backs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these uh that's so good. These early can drafters. one person touch grass. Can one person <laughs> no, <laughs> dude. perhaps on underdog touch grass? <laughs> Very clearly not. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, totally. Kamara 65. Why not? I mean, Kamara's actually probably the only one on this list who I think is even close to a good pick. All the rest of the guys, well, Tyreek is fine. Um, but yeah, all, yeah. all the rest of them are, are probably pretty bad. Yeah. In terms yeah, of I think Tyreek's back, you know, I like taking Tyreek when he falls for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone I take some fields. To... Fields is going to play. I am not even, I'm not even a hundred percent sold. That's true. What is the scenario where Justin Fields is not playing? Like there are so many teams that need quarterbacks. How does they, he not play? They take, they take Caleb and don't trade him. They're going to trade him, man. Is Is it a little bit, it, it's not like this, but. It's a little bit like last year, the Trey Lance thing, when everyone's saying, oh, he, well, he's either playing for the 49ers or someone's going to trade for it him. Is, it is. It's just a tiny bit. It's a tiny bit like, like that. the Trey Lance thing. Guys, but, Trey Lance couldn't like get on the field. Justin Fields, there's like a huge Bears contingent that like wants him over Caleb. They're they're nuts. He's, he's but 10, like, there's this is a different situation. He's it's different. But, as an NFL starter, I, I don't uh, think it's that different. I actually I agree with Crane that I have a really hard time imagining him not being a starter week one, 
but I do think there's a decent chance he's not a full like if he goes to a team and they're four and nine, are, are they not going to like let their third round quarterback like say some some team trades for Fields and drafts Spencer Rattler or insert rookie you know day two day three pick yeah you're right here you're like, right there's job security risks there, for sure yeah. Because he's yeah. proven to just not be a winning quarterback, and people can say quarterback wins don't matter, but NFL coaches and GMs trying to save their they, job. They matter to them. <laughs> they matter to them. So yeah. I, I really hope he goes to the Steelers because I think you know Tomlin pulls a you know a playoff berth out of his ass every year. So we know they're not going to be benching anyone. You forget who <laughs> Colin plays for uh, great for them. Great. That's what I want. I want them running. I mean, because yeah. I'm hoping Fields will be a part of that running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't mind Fields. I I just kind of want to see the the landing spot, um, which is true for a lot of these players. A um, couple other guys on here. So I did want to talk about these free agent running backs: Eckler, Barkley, Derrick Henry. A couple of them show up on here. Um, Austin obviously, Eckler is like closer to retiring yeah. to be a podcaster than to being a top 10 running back in fantasy. I think. Yeah. It's the, the only, I guess with Eckler, you could say last year was the product of him playing on a high ankle sprain and it's not indicative of his talent, but I don't he know. was flashing as a, as a fade last year. He's 30 like heading into the year or 29. Yeah. yeah. He's a small Eckler. Dude. Eckler wins grand two million dollars and he immediately just just buries Dude, him. After knowing him so quick, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was quiet about it. I but I didn't. I, I was uh, not high on him in the ranks last year. Yeah, um, <laughs> but but one of the like what I was gonna say is one of these guys is gonna get like a great landing spot, I think. But as a group, they're probably gonna collectively disappoint in their landing spots. Yeah. That, yeah. that that's that's my 100%. take. So I'm okay with fading them and waiting. I do understand Barkley. Barkley goes to the Texans and he that's, could be see, that's, a and everyone's gonna pick. get so jazzed up about it. And yeah. and it's actually not gonna end up being that awesome, I think, because won't he just won't he just kind of like get interspersed a little bit with Damian Pierce? Like I don't think will Damian Pierce go to zero? I guess he probably I mean, will. Isn't I guess he, he at did. zero now. Yeah, he just All got right, never mind. completely <laughs> passed by Devin Singletary. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, he did. It's over. They're, they were playing like Dare Abungawale and, and Mike Boone, I think, <laughs> over him. <laughs> <laughs> they were. They were. That's true. I don't know. Yeah. I guess maybe I, I'm biased because I just think of Devin Singletary as like a guy who can only be in a timeshare, but I guess that was not the case. No, he yeah. he passed him. It was like it was like the Chuba Hubbard Miles Sanders thing. Like he they gave it him was, more work. Yeah. They're like, oh, we like what we see. Okay, let's try it again. Oh yeah, this is better. I I learned retroactively that uh, the coach the Texans coaching staff nickname for Singletary was Motor, and I was like, I would have not taken a single Damian Pierce team <laughs> had I known that they were calling him Motor. <laughs> like, no, well, we gotta chance. get on. We gotta get on the nickname beat this year. That's that's some key. Yeah, I mean, come on. That's what huge. about. What about this? Feels like a pretty appropriate price for DK Metcalf because it feels like this is where he was going last year. Yeah, with the assumption that JSN was going to be better than him, and and now I think we know pretty definitively he's not better than him. <laughs> and Lockett fell off a little. Yeah, yeah. So, Lockett is thirty one now. I yeah. like I I like Metcalf a lot at at that price. Um, yeah, he's going near Pittman, Mike Evans, Jalen Waddle. I don't know. I, I guess I kind of want all those guys, but he seems like barely, fairly priced there. I've been kind of bearish on Metcalf generally, where I just feel like he he just like name brand gets yeah, you're, overdrafted. You're, you're bearish on Kenneth Walker too. You just hate all the grown men on the West Coast for whatever reason. I guess that is true. I, yeah, give me the little slot receivers in Seattle. I can't handle the big grown <laughs> hey, I men. I want Zach Charbonnet <laughs> and Jackson Smith and Jigba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the more well, consonants in the last name, the better for Kareem. Yeah. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> well, yeah. Now that's that is my process. So, um, <laughs> so I can't be drafting Metcalf. But I was gonna say, for once, I'm actually even with the field on Metcalf. So probably, yeah. I think that if anything, maybe that means he's a tar cause, target because I'm usually kind of off compared to the name brand value on him. 
Yeah. All right. I have a hard out. You guys can go as long as you need to, but I'm out. Later. Later. All right. See you, Davis. Um, we can wrap up to the show with going over some rookies. We did this exercise last year on ADP chasing. Um, so what, what's shown here is the underdog ADP on the Y axis. And then the consensus big board rate ranking from NFL mock draft database on the X axis here. And this was just sort of a way to look at, okay. Do you does have the, the charts handy from last year? Those might be interesting to look at if you did. Sorry if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I probably can dig those up. But um, last year, I think it did help us identify guys like Devon Achan. Um, Wayne McBride, I remember it yeah. being pretty good of like, this doesn't look great, guys. Yeah, and Izzy Abanacanda, um, a guy who I was – in on last year i remember yeah, I, I kept hand waving away that red flag because he kept not popping on the draft capital side of things and i kept being like ah you know once once the scouts see his 40 time he's gonna he's gonna get drafted right. higher and then he didn't so um this was yeah this year there's not as many big outliers as last year um i can i can maybe share this chart in your discord from last year or something Korean. i can't find it right now but, okay um the guys that are popping here as undervalued, um, Will Shipley is one. And again, I'm at the point, Crane, where I know like nothing about these rookies, so I'm going to need to rely on you for additional context. But he's one that shows up here. And then two others, uh, maybe Dylan Johnson and Jawar Jordan a little bit. Uh, but those are sort of your very last round pick type guys. Uh, but yeah, curious on, on Shipley. Is he at all interesting to you? Is there a reason why? His ADP is so low relative to his consensus big board ranking. I'm not that in on Shipley. He doesn't really pop for me, but he did. He ran a fair amount of routes. Okay. Uh, he ran 17 routes a game, which is like third in the class of, of kind of the, the relevant guys anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, he wasn't super efficient. He doesn't really pop as like a overly interesting dude. But if you're kind of just betting like the NFL is going to like this guy, more than you know, people like me, and um, he'll be able to get out there. Like the fact that he, you know, he, he had a decent workload and then included a lot of routes. So he's not that big. He's he's like two oh nine. Um, okay. So he's probably like if he does get out there, I don't know that he's going to be handling like the full workload. But like maybe it's a Tajay Spears sort of thing. You know, I think Spears is a more interesting prospect, but maybe it's that that kind of type that sort of archetype of bet got it okay yeah and then like some of these like last round got i remember last year i thought this was interesting just looking at you know there gets to a point on this chart right um starting at dylan johnson all the way to carson Steele on the right where it's just flat right like none none of these guys really have adps or mm -hmm. getting drafted at all but some are getting drafted more than others looks like you know frank gore jr and Dylan Lobb are getting drafted a little bit, whereas guys like Jawar Jordan, um, Dijon Edwards aren't getting drafted at all, right? So I think that is interesting if you're mixing in 20th round picks in these tournaments to consider some of these guys that have decent draft capital projections and just aren't getting clicked at all. Um, yeah, I, I do. What I will say is this is a very weak running back class. Yeah. Um, and so I think I'm trying to be because I've I've drafted a lot of Dylan Lobb, but I'm trying to be careful about how much I draft because like you know the he's maybe a little undervalued in terms of the draft capital, but that draft capital projection is gonna be pretty shaky this far out. Yeah. Um at the same time, some of these guys who aren't great prospects and we think have draft capital. You know they they could be finding their ways into into jobs because there's not that many, you know, there's not like that many guys that are even going to get drafted. I think, and then, yeah. um, you know, it's also kind of a time in the NFL where there's there's some like guys aging out. So if you just were to go a little bit more on draft capital this year, um, I think that would that would probably make sense because there's not a ton separating these running backs. Yeah, and we probably should talk about some of these guys um you know we're talking sort of the deep cuts but some of these guys early so the, the top three by consensus big board rankings are trey benson blake Corum, and jonathan brooks 
But interestingly, they're kind of in inverse order um, by ADP. So Brooks is going much higher than, not much higher, but decently higher than Corum and Trey Benson in underdog drafts, even though the draft capital projection looks a little bit safer for Benson and Corum. I, I'm, I don't know. I guess like, I'm not saying, you know, fade Brooks just because he's in the red on this chart and draft Benson and Corum. That's, that's not really what I'm doing, but that's something to monitor. I think like if we get closer to the draft and that still seems to be true, I guess I'd be like a little bit skeptical of Brooks relative to those other guys, but I know a ton of people are, are high on Brooks based on his prospect profile. So I'm not too concerned about that as of yet. Yeah. And he's coming off a torn ACL. So that's the other thing um, yeah. that we have to be price conscious of, but He's so cheap now. I mean, he's, yeah, he's been so he's cheap. moved up. He's moved yeah. up a fair amount. Um, and I've been drafting a bunch of them. Um, and we're we're pretty far ahead in the ranks. But it, there would be a point at which you're like, I need points from this pick before you know, I don't know, like November. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it's it's a the rookie running backs are always kind of betting on the late season fancy playoffs to really be the time they shine, but the the weaker their early season profile is, the less you want to pay. Um, so to me, it would be like as he rises, and I think he will continue to rise. Then, you know, just be just be mindful of the way you're building with him, because you're not going to get you're not going to get much in the early season at all. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I really think all these guys, and you could even throw Braylon Allen into this group too. All these guys have like um, day two, like you know, round, round two, round three projected sort of draft capital based on this big board. And, you know, to get Braylon Allen, Blake Corum, Trey Benson, 140 to 150. I mean, I, I don't know. Second round, third round running backs typically will go higher than that in fantasy in, in an underdog draft. So it strikes me that all these guys are, are pretty fairly priced. And it is kind of a weak running back landscape in the overall NFL right now. Like there's, a lot of spots where I think these guys become pretty interesting. So yeah, I think, I think the, you know, rookie running backs more so than the rookie wide receivers, which are likely, you know, which we'll get to in a sec are probably more likely to have uh, some big rises, but we'll see. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit behind on Corum. I just, he kind of just looks more like kind of a plotter to me, but I took him yesterday he felt he fell probably to I don't know like pick one forty five or one fifty or something, and I was like, "All right, sweet," um, which is about where I have him ranked. I've got him ranked at one forty five. His ADP is one thirty seven, okay. so a little bit lower on him. But yep. if I get him at a at a discount, basically where I think he should go, I'm happy because I agree with you. I mean, he could land in a good spot. So it's like one of those things where he's like the one rookie running back that I have a fade stance on. The rest of them. Mm -hmm. I'm basically at market or a little bit above. Um, Benson, I'm fairly substantially above. Brooks as well. Um, Estime, I like Estime a fair amount, but not quite as much as, as those guys rel relative to ADP. Benson is probably the one where if you're just playing this as like the market, he would be the big target. Where okay. I think he's probably the best bet um, because of Brooks's ACL. Benson would then be the best bet to like look like an out of the gate starting running back. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And yeah, I'd have to actually go through it, but we already talked about the Texans, you know, the chargers have a need a running back. Cowboys have nobody under contract at running back Raiders potentially, you know, that there's tons of spots and some of them, I think really exciting for fantasy, like the Cowboys, you know, Bengals and Texans probably top amongst those running backs at least so um will be interesting to see the vikings are an interesting one like yeah vikings just, just chandler yeah. yeah there's a lot of interesting spots and the thing about it is like even if the guys don't work even if they're kendra miller like you know you're going to be drafting them pretty high <laughs> even if they yeah. fail you, you you'll like at least feel better about having gotten exposure at a cheaper price than you know only paying the expensive price tag for these guys yeah the Kendrick, like, Kendrick Miller thing was just so, like, what are the Saints doing? They're 
in absolute cap hell and they spend a third round pick on a running back they never use like i i'll never understand that decision it's bizarre yeah it's just, it was a strange one yeah okay we can out here with the wide receivers um this one i i kind of because we're showing a lot of wide receivers here i broke it up into different zones people watching on youtube will see uh it's not a straight line through these guys it's sort of uh hitched at a couple different points but still still the same kind of point i you know, my conclusion from looking at this is the the market is basically factoring in draft capital like to a T. Like there's there's not really huge outliers on on this chart. Like it's kind of following this line of best fit uh, that I drew. I think super late one guy I wanted to throw out was Johnny Wilson. Pretty mm -hmm. good projected draft capital. He's like not getting clicked at all. It looks like based on his ADP. Um, I clip him besides, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. What's the story on him? He's, he's in like the ranks. Athletic, you athletic see him in the ranks, right? Yeah, he's a massive wide receiver. Um, there's like some talk of like, oh, is he actually a tight end? But not because of his skill set, just because he's really, really big. He's like, I've talked to them on the. Uh, if if you haven't heard this, uh, <laughs> and you're listening to this, you, you could find him in. I, I, it's time stamped on YouTube now. The four hour podcast I did with Bime Force. You can <laughs> go, go find it. It's towards the end. But we talk about him. He's a really interesting kind of uh, – he's a strange prospect, strange like mix of traits where he's not a big contested catch guy even though he's really big. So, But he is kind of interesting as like a dude who can actually get some separation. I think he could be kind of Chase Claypool-y is really what it comes down to. And that's good and bad. But Claypool was productive as a rookie. Um you know, the Bears traded a second-round pick for him. So there's like <laughs> – there was there was some Claypool optimism um, and some Claypool production early on. He was and a huge so, fantasy hit as a as a rookie. I mean, he he yeah. almost did like the the Christian Watson rookie season. Right. Um, yeah. So, so I, I think he has that. Like as a twentieth round pick, if he, if he happens to be like Chase Claypool, the whole experience, you know, he he busts. Uh, the Bears traded a, another second round pick for him. Everything amazing for for this price tag in the rookie season um so yeah i think he's definitely worth mixing in uh jacob cowing is a guy that i've been cooling on as we learn that he's like 160 pounds oh man and uh johnny wilson i've been i've been trying to mix in more uh compared to cowing yeah and yeah the last thing i'll say like on these charts obviously we don't know the draft capital yet and these projections are not going to be perfect but i, I do think there's some logic in, in using this as tiebreakers because like it does make a big difference in the NFL if you if you take a guy who went in the third round versus someone who goes in the fifth round those guys that go in round two or round three are almost guaranteed to get a chance at some point in the season to get on the field and run some routes like I don't know I can't really remember that many third round picks that didn't get a chance maybe like Danny Gray and Trey Tucker, like you can, you can find the examples of it, but it's rare. Cedric right. Tillman didn't really get, but he was out there at the end Actually, of the season. I think. Yeah, I feel like he kind of did and was just so bad or he was bad targets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like these guys will at least get a chance to run routes, whereas the fifth round picks, those guys like sometimes don't even get a chance to run routes. Like your Tyler Scotts, your I don't know, I'm blanking on other guys who went late last year, but. Those guys often don't get chances, so I think it no, is a decent true. tie tiebreaker to use. Um, yeah. Any any other thoughts on? Well, and also, I mean, draft capital is generally tied with how good these guys are too. Yeah. So you know, there's potential that some of these guys are flying under the radar from a talent perspective right now, and we'll ultimately view them as it just much better, you know, real life talent. I mean, Rasheed Rice was a guy who at this point would have been kind of in the Ricky Pearsall mix, you know? Yeah. I think Ricky Pearsall is going to have a, a, a Rasheed Rice type <laughs> season, but like, I, I think being open-minded to like the idea of we are going to have different associations with these names very soon. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of information to come, not just in terms of the opportunity, but the talent. Yeah. And I did, I did actually find the charts from last year. Korean. I don't know if you're able to um, oh. add them quickly. Um, but yeah, this is 
This is from February 24th, so the same time last year. Jameer Gibbs, look at that. Gibbs and A-Chain. That's oh, A-Chain, wow. All right, so these chart big win for these charts. Sean Tucker, overvalued. Um, don't take him. Yeah. Uh, Zach Evans. Take Rashad I White. You got, you got there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I was so off Sean Tucker that it got me on a huge bag of Rashad White last year. Um, <laughs> overvalued, JSN, Kayshawn Booty, Marvin. Quentin Johnston. Oh, no, he was undervalued. Oh, he, shit. That's good. <laughs> 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 uh, Rasheed Rice, though. Rasheed that's Rice. Nice. Tank Dell. There you go. Tank Dell. Rasheed Rice was a guy that I do remember last year, like, just taking him in best ball. And it was weird because nobody on Twitter or whatever was talking about Rasheed Rice before the draft last year because his, you know, analytical profile, whatever. I think even his film profile raised some red flags, but got the draft capital and – um yeah yep. so so wait let me, let me bring up the other one again because so that was kind of in that 75 to to 100 range right we we're looking yeah. at like this 75 to 100 includes tank dell and rasheed rice i guess he was a little ahead of 75 um so that's that's where we get our roman wilson yeah. tez walker malachi corley ricky Pearsall, johnny wilson brendan rice jalen mcmillan jermaine burton Another guy that I, I think is kind of interesting. I think both McMillan and Burton are pretty interesting, actually. Jamari yeah. Thrash. I, I think one one difficult part about this draft class, it's the reverse of running back. We're like, at running back, I really would just like to know like where these guys are, what opportunities they have, and then we can probably forget about like a bunch of these names. You know, there's gonna be a bunch of like yeah. Zach Evans where we're like, this is not, you know, it's not happening. Um there's a lot of wide receivers in this class who I think could make some noise, especially, you know, if we're just looking at like, can you score points for one of three weeks at the very end of the fantasy season um, for, you know, a 20th, 19th, 20th round price tag. Like I'm trying to mix these guys in. Uh, I'm trying to get excited about different guys every week and, and kind of, you know, get my exposures mixed up that way. Like yep. getting a little bit more excited about McMillan, Johnny Wilson, Jamari Thrash right now. Previously, I was taking a lot of Jermaine Burton, Jacob Cowing, um, Ricky Pearsall was taking a ton of early. So uh, Demontes Walker was taking a ton of before. I'm trying to like even that out a little bit more. Take more Roman Wilson. Mm -hmm. So I think I am having a little bit trouble taking Xavier Leggett, and it's interesting to see him as a target here. Um, he he was not as big as he was listed at a, at the senior bowl and his like kind of this uh, wins with athleticism type of guy, but he'll be interesting post combine to see, to see like where the, the buzz is on him. But uh, he's someone that I might need to, to get excited about and, and start mixing it a little bit more. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And, goes. Yeah. And it, it, the, the quantity of the guy. So the, a rough way to look at this chart is look at a hundred on the X axis of the, um, you know, big board rankings from NFL mock draft database. Anyone before a hundred, you can kind of think of as like a projected day one or day two pick, right? Cause there's three rounds, you know, the, the last pick of the third round is going to be close to pick a hundred roughly. Right. So anyone before there is a day one or day two pick and just counting them up here. Like there's, I think 20 projected day one or day two picks, um based on that which is a ton like you go back to last year which was a, a decent wide receiver class maybe not a great one there was maybe i don't know eight nine ten or something like that so this is just a super deep class a lot of guys are, that are projected to get draft capital so i think that would be my approach is just mixing in a bunch of these guys i think they're they're a lot safer in some ways in best ball um maybe not pre-draft because there's obviously some some rest they'll go later in the draft than we're expected but as long as they get that draft capital they're pretty safe last round picks safe in the sense that they're going to be on the field when things count whereas you know you take elijah moore you know hate to throw him under the bus but he is a guy who's a couple years in the league hasn't shown a lot like or throw throw putting... my guy under the bus throw throw bateman under the bus who, who yeah. got some positive reports yeah. today and i'm actually been ahead of adp on him so we didn't raise him because the reports okay <laughs> <laughs> although i did like seeing the reports but the um you know and, and maybe you know harbaugh's pretty trustworthy uh coach beak index says he's trustworthy so uh okay. maybe it's all real i'm gonna raise him um no but like if you look at bateman 
uh, you know, he should be out there running the routes. We feel good about that. But these guys should also be out there running the routes if they get the draft capital at the end of the season. Yeah. But you also have this massive unknown of how good are they and that you want that unknown at this price tag. Like that unknown is a real asset. You know, if they're good and we know they're going to get the late season opportunity, that creates a ton of upside for them. And as much as like I would love to see Bateman getting more run, you know, he he has had some chances and has never really done anything. Like, is Bateman going to win us tournaments? Probably not. You know, I think your best case scenario with Bateman is like he has one Zay Jones spike week, one Darius Slayton type spike week at the end of the season. You know, maybe maybe another one earlier that kind of helps you advance or whatever. But we just saw last year, I mean, there were some legitimate home runs at rookie wide receiver in the late rounds. And this class is so deep that I think we get some again. So, you know, though, that's just more fertile ground. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's just like, I know we, we talk about wide receiver being a talent driven position, which, which it is a hundred percent, but you know, there, there also is this dynamic of just haves and have nots in the NFL from a passing game perspective at this point. And, Look at the top two rookie wide receivers last year, right? Tank Dell and Rasheed Rice. I think they're they're awesome talents, right? But if they don't land on the Chiefs and the Texans, I doubt we're talking about them. Like Puka Nakua erasure. Yeah. Oh shit, Puka Nakua. I, I forgot about him. But that that's even crazier, right? The the top three guys, like who had those guys even in their top ten of rookie wide receivers last year, right? Like they they were they were buried. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And they're the now they're the top three, uh, right? So, anyways, um, no, and I mean, and actually, the the point you're making, I think, is only strengthened a lot, actually, by Puka Nakua. I mean, Sean McVay is one of the ultimate kind of scheme guys that we want to bet on. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that that that's an interesting thing to think about, especially you know once we get landing spots. I don't know how we can. I guess what that would lead me to think. Uh, in the late rounds would be another reason to mix up our exposures, right? If we're starting to think maybe landing spot matters, especially in the rookie season for these guys. Cause like, who knows, maybe some of the guys that didn't have great years are still really good. Like maybe we get a Marvin Mims year two breakout. I'm not actually taking a lot of Mims, but um, it's certainly possible that we, that we end up having a pretty different perception of how good these players are after the second year. And, but the, the but the landing spot thing could could make a big difference potentially uh, for yeah. the for the first year, right? Yeah, that that's what I'm trying to say is like I think the the dynasty mindset of looking at rookie wide receivers um, makes a ton of sense, and you should definitely have that angle when you're picking guys. But you know, we just talked about Chase Claypool, right? And and Christian Watson and Rasheed Rice, and, and these were all guys that people were pretty down on in dynasty for different reasons. And it, and it turns out that maybe they were right. Like maybe the dynasty people who said Chase Claypool was bad. They probably, they were right. Right. Like he is bad. He's like out of the NFL. Right. But he got drafted into a good landing spot as rookie year, got good draft capital and was a huge fantasy asset. So I guess my point is like, and I've heard, you I guess I would say before. the Claypool yeah. one's interesting though, because he wasn't a good landing spot. He, was with uh, sure, yeah, that would have been Juju Smith Schuster yeah. and Deontay Johnson. There were no targets available. Yeah, so it was like you. I think you know it. It can be tricky. What is a good landing spot? And I guess what I would what I would like to be more conscious of this year is a good landing spot is a good passing offense. Yeah, right. If I've got good offensive coaches and they're willing to pass the ball, then I'm not I'm not gonna like get as nervous, I think, about targets because but the, the whole play is that they get run at the you know at the end of the season. And that they're 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 maybe not scoring that many points over the first 10 weeks or whatever, but then they're in a an exciting passing game to close the year and you know generating the most important spike weeks that you can get at the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Awesome. Well, um, I got to, got to head out, but, um, that was a good, good show to kick off the season. As mentioned at the top, uh, we are still figuring out the details of, of what our schedule is going to be for ADP chasing, but 
tentatively. I think we'll be back on a consistent basis post draft, maybe one or two more shows pre draft. We'll see. Um, but we'll be back uh, this off season later. But it was good to do a check in, Pat. And uh, yeah, anything else coming up for you on Legendary Upside? You want to? tell people about it's weird that i'm hosting the show on your channel i'm confused as to what's going on now <laughs> <laughs> can we switch back can we switch back, yeah, we'll switch back. yeah okay yeah, yeah. We're... <laughs> is SMH, there anything you we'll... want to tell people about on the channel that you run <laughs> uh, <laughs> um yeah we'll we'll uh we'll figure out a way to get more uh adp chasing in your life one way or another um and we're gonna be uh we're gonna be doing more See now, I, I can't host my own channel because I'm I'm just, I, I'm, I'm an, an analyst again. mode. We're going to be doing uh, some more podcasts on the feed later this week. I think the plan is to do a um, like pre combine best ball check in, sort of like get our priors laid down a little bit before the combine on some of these rookies and stuff like that. Um, also, I, I'll mention I had a, an article out on Jalen Warren and why I'm so excited about him as a breakout bet. Um, any any thoughts on him, Sam? You into, are you into Warren? I listen. I actually listened to that today, um, and yeah, the the case made a lot of sense to me. The fact that he's sort of um, an elite talent that's not being priced like one, uh, and I also thought like the Najee Harris thing kind of like insulates them a little bit because you know they're not going to invest in a right. third back, or at least it'd be weird if they did. So um, yeah, I thought great article. You made a great case for it. So I'm I'm in on Warren again. All right, so I got Sam. So uh, it's a convincing article. <laughs> we, we, we can count so on I'm that. I'm usually very skeptical of, of great <laughs> yeah. arguments. So. Convince Sam, okay? <laughs> this is a good article. Check it out from Legendary Upside. Um, and a uh, bunch of rookie content that I'll be having uh, rolling out post-combine, uh, doing my typical rookie deep dive. So look for that. But, yeah, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you guys later.